So the complaint is, is that the walk-in, beer walk-in, is at about 50 degrees. Manager's saying that the fans had been off all day. I can't remember if they said they came on at some point. That's where we're at right now. No display on the digital readout. Both units are off. So, came up onto the roof before I did anything downstairs just to see what's going on. Disconnect switch is on. Defrost timer looks like it just came out of defrost, but the condensing unit's not running. I've not applied service gauges or even used my electrical meter yet. So I always like to do just a little pre-inspection, see if the fan motors spin, they do. Feel the compressor, it does not feel warm, so it hasn't been running for a while. So we're gonna get the meter out, start checking voltage. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we can find here. I'm gonna check for a three phase voltage coming in on the contactor. Interesting. We've got single phase voltage. Ah. So, we're going to check to ground. That's line one to ground. Line two to ground. Line three to ground. And I'm just simply testing on this contactor from line one to ground and I get nothing. So we're missing a leg. So I'm gonna shut this guy off. Test in here. See what we got going on. Test voltage. Okay, so let's step back. Try to get you guys a good view here. So I'm testing line one to line two. Line two to line three. Line three to line one. So we got voltage incoming, but we don't have voltage going out. So obvious, we're gonna check fuses. So let me go ahead and put my meter on tone. Okay, let's check across the fuse. Fuse number one is good. Fuse number two is bad. Fuse number three is good, so we've got a blown fuse. So I'm not just gonna replace that fuse, okay? Before I go any further, I'm gonna find that line voltage, see what it goes to. Because I always kinda try to tell people, yeah, we could just throw a fuse in there and see if it blows again, but I'd like to see, I'm gonna test the compressor, make sure it's not grounded out. I'm gonna test the condenser fan motors. I'm gonna test each way to see. Now the quick way to do this is to go to the load side of the contactor and test it to ground. I'm gonna get in here and test from each load leg to ground. Load leg three to ground, nothing. Load leg two to ground, nothing. Load leg one to ground, nothing. So there's nothing that's an obvious short, but I am gonna tell you one thing. Look at this defrost timer, and this is something we wanna remember and think about. Notice that it looks like it just came out of defrost. Let's look down at the bottom of the defrost timer. This is a cooler, but look at that. They got an X terminal and they're wired on number three. So this looks like it's gonna be electric heat for the defrost. So the fact that we've got a blown fuse, the fact that we're just out of defrost, before I replace that fuse, I'm gonna check my electric uh, heaters to make sure because 
it's plausible that the unit blew the fuse when it was in defrost. So that's where we're going to go next. Again, all this before I'm going to change fuses because why waste a fuse? Why potentially blow a main breaker? You know, we're going to we're going to double check everything before we even replace the fuse. So I opened up all the evaporator coils and did the same test where I ohmed out each terminal to ground. And I got nothing, so that means that I have no obvious grounded out wires. Doesn't mean I don't have a short somewhere still. Open up everything. Mind you, that solenoid harness right there is not being used. Same thing. Went over here and checked each terminal to ground to make sure I didn't have any continuity. I don't. So now I'm going to open up the evaporator coils. Inspect the wiring. I already noticed this, and I don't like this. Could be a problem. It's a very common thing, but it doesn't look like it's shorted. We will repair that, but I'm just going to go through and inspect everything. Spin all the motors. There's nothing obvious. And then if I can't find anything obvious, then I'm going to go ahead and put fuses in it and turn the unit back on and see if I can simulate what happened, whether or not it happened in defrost or not. Okay, so. I went ahead, I didn't save, spared you the agony and uh, pulled out the fan blades on the other evaporator, inspected everything, nothing obvious. I mean, there was that little spot where the wires looked like they rubbed over there, but I, it didn't look like it actually broke the jacket, so I just taped them up and resecured them so they're not rubbing on the bottom of the drain pan anymore. So at this point, nothing is jumping out at me, but one thing I did notice is that there's no solenoid valve in that coil. And if we come over here, there's no solenoid valve in this coil. But this temperature controller that you see right here is controlling a solenoid valve somewhere. More than likely it's on top of the box and I do need to get up on top of there because there should be a common liquid line and then it's going to tee off to both coils. More than likely there's a power coming out of that temperature controller going up to wherever the solenoid valve's at. I did not see it on the roof, however I will go back up and inspect one more time. So I want to get up to that solenoid valve just to make sure something didn't short out on that. And then after that, I'll go ahead and replace the fuses and then just turn the power back on and see if I can get it to trip the breaker if I can't find something at the solenoid valve. So, but again, I know this is painstaking, but I got to go through this because trust me from experience, you don't want to just change fuses because that one time where it's the worst case scenario, there ends up being a catastrophe because you replaced a fuse on something that had a direct short and we could talk about that later, but it can lead to all kinds of problems, so. You know, it always helps to have somewhat, not perfect, but good organization. So that when it comes time to getting what you need, you've got it. Looks like I got 15 amp fuses. 20 amp fuses. I think what's in there is a 25, but I'll take the 20s up, see if that'll help us for now. We don't want to go over the maximum fuse size. Those are 30s. I'd rather roll with the 20s first. So, on the nameplate, it says maximum overcurrent protection, 25 amps. I'm gonna point out something. Just because you see a fuse in there doesn't mean that it's correct. So don't just use what's in there. There's nothing worse than the excuse of, well, I put back in what was in there. We as technicians gotta make sure that we're checking everything out. So, like I said, um, in my truck, I didn't have 25 amps. I had 30, 20, and 15. So, I'm obviously for, troubleshooting purposes going to put in a 20 because if we look at the unit more than likely for the time being until I can get the right fuses that will get me by at least a troubleshoot because uh, defrost heaters are max 19 amps yeah so it, it should be good enough for troubleshooting we'll find out right now so I'm going to change these fuses so I can get my fuse puller out get it 
it in there. There we go. Okay. Throw some fuses in. fuses in there again the unit is out of defrost at the moment oh another thing that I'm noticing too is that timer is really hard to turn it's very very difficult it's all bound up with sand it's interesting okay so I'm gonna turn power on see what happens So this thing has a digital control, so it's not necessarily going to turn right on. Look at that. I mean, I'm holding the contactor in, so it's not calling yet. But compressor runs, condenser fan motors run. So it's like it's going to be an interesting one. So what I'm going to do uh, while I'm waiting for it to turn on is I'm going to go ahead and gauge up. Got the job link probes here. We're gonna use those right now temporarily. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Turn the gauges on. I came down here just to look at the evaporators. Now that I replaced the fuses, just do a quick inspect. Both evap fans are running. And my thermostat. So ASD is anti short cycle delay. So it has a little delay. Usually it's like a minute or two. Uh, there is a way to bypass that, but I can't remember, so we're just going to wait for a minute. So it's currently 52 degrees in here, and everything's running at the moment, which is kind of a bummer because this will make troubleshooting a little bit harder because it's not going to jump out at our face and say, this is your problem. So we're going to have to, you know, evaluate the system, run it through all the tests, defrost, everything, uh, you know, to try to either get it to happen again or to try to find things that are bad. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. So as far as that service call goes, the walk-in freezer, or I'm sorry, uh, beer walk-in, the reason why I called it a walk-in freezer was it's a medium temp cooler, but they have electric defrost uh, in the evaporator coil. So when you see electric defrost, I automatically think walk-in freezer. Regardless. So to recap the call, the first thing that happened when I got there. So let's do a little recap. The original service call was beer walk-in, not temping. So when I arrived, first thing I did, spoke to the manager, asked her what the symptoms were, what was going on. She said the evaporator coils were not running, the fans were not blowing. And they haven't been since yesterday. Their box temp when I did arrive was about 47 degrees. Immediately uh, went onto the roof, found out that the unit in fact was electric defrost down at the evaporator coils, which was a little odd because it is a cooler system, medium temperature. Uh, the box set point is about 35 degrees. Usually when you see that, typically don't see electric defrost but there's some rare cases this particular customer really wants to keep their beer walking at about they want their beer as cold as possible so they really like to keep their beer walking down in the 32 degree range 33 degree range they like to skate the line of freezing their kegs i'm not a fan of that because then you get nuisance calls and my beer is freezing my beer is freezing so i tend to set their temperatures up at about 35 that's where this particular one was set. 
So anyways, when I arrived, uh, I found a uh, blown fuse on the B leg as in boy. That happened to be the leg that controlled the uh, thermostat. That was actually like the control circuit. So before I replaced the fuse, I went through everything as much as I could to make sure I didn't have anything that was grounded. All the terminals, the compressor, the condenser fan motors. I basically put my meter on continuity and checked every terminal I could to ground. Because from my experience, you could just throw fuses in there, see if it blows a fuse again. And that very rare, very rare case if it is a direct short, it causes a big catastrophe. And I have had it happen where instead of checking to see if I had a grounded compressor, I just replaced the fuse to see if it would blow again. When I replaced the fuse, it blew again, but it blew the main. And then on top of that, this is another situation. Then on top of that, when it blew the main, the breaker went bad. So I blew an entire panel's main that controlled all their ACs in that particular building. And this was a very rare circuit breaker that they couldn't get for a day. It was a disaster. So that's why I say, step back to my service call today. That's why I say, before you replace the fuses, go through and ohm everything out to make sure that there's nothing grounded, nothing obvious. I went through all the electrical, inspected all the wires, couldn't find anything wrong. So at that point, I went ahead and um, replaced the fuse, is all three. I don't replace just one fuse, change all three. And then went through all unit operations to make sure everything was working properly. Everything was working properly. Box started coming down to temperature. I let it run for a little while because uh, the box temp was at 47 degrees. I needed to get that box temp down. I needed to get the evaporator temp actually down below 20 degrees to be able to initiate defrost because it's electric heat and test the heaters. So I had to let it run, basically come all the way down to temperature. Then I initiated defrost. And when I initiated defrost, I actually found that the defrost clock was sticking, of which you'll, you saw in the video where it was hard to turn. Now, I don't like that. And, you know, I can guess and try to predict the reason why the fuse blew. It, would have been something to do with that defrost clock running slow. I highly doubt it though. I think that defrost clock was a whole nother issue. Um, but regardless, the defrost clock needed to be replaced. So I replaced the defrost clock, checked the heaters, everything checked out fine. I did uh, give myself a little disclaimer when I spoke to the manager and just said, hey, you know, I did not find electrical short that jumped out of my face and said this is why I'm blowing the fuse I did find a defrost clock that was bad but you know I kind of told her there could still be something going on but I've done everything in my power short of sitting there for seven hours and watch the unit operate to make sure that it wasn't going to happen again I'm pointing that out because be as thorough as possible cover your ass just to be safe other than that, everything checked out okay. 